Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome. In this tutorial, we will be talking about localization and how that is done in Unreal Engine 5. Now, localization is essentially just the concept of translating your game for different cultures. And you might think that uh, if you are doing it in English already, you might feel like you don't have to do localization because uh, most people speak English. And that might be true to some sense, but some people might know English, but might know another language better and would prefer to play in that language if they could. Then there are other uh, groups of people that actually don't speak English, but uh, can only speak some other language. And you won't be able to reach out to that group as easily if you don't have translation available in your game. So to be able to reach as many people as possible, uh, localization is important. Another reason why localization is important is that even though you might be making a game that's intended for a Western market, it might be that some part of East Europe or some other part is a region where your game becomes really popular due to how their culture is different or something like that. And it's very difficult to uh, predict this in advance, which is why it is good to actually try and reach out to as many people as possible with your game, uh, because you never know where it can actually be a huge hit. When it comes to localization, how it can be done in Unreal Engine, there are uh, a few different ways. Uh, you can uh, have localization or translation in the form of different text elements in your game. You can have it for specific assets in your game. Uh, it could be like a road sign or something like that, if that's what you're looking to do, of course. You might want to have a game that takes place in Spain and then you wouldn't translate the, the road signs because they are supposed to be in Spanish. Uh, but you could if you wanted to do something like that. Uh, and then also you have the possibility of uh, translation through sounds, of course. What we will be going through today will be the most basic part first, which is the translation and localization of text. So what we have here today is Unreal Engine version 5.03. And this is a completely blank project except for a few things. I have created a few folders here to demonstrate something and we'll get to that later. Inside of that I have one actor I created myself called BP Actor in one folder which has essentially nothing in it except for a variable that is of the type text. And I have in another folder here UI created a very simple and somewhat ugly menu which just has some simple buttons on them. And that is essentially everything that we will be making use of in this project to demonstrate what we need to do. So, let's get started. To begin with, let's take a look at what kind of texts you have available in Unreal Engine. So, you have name, string, and text as our alphanumerical variable types. And out of these three, text is the one that we need to make use of when we want to localize something. The system is built around um, identifying and finding texts in the system, so if you have something that is string, it's not going to be found. So you need to have all the parts that need to be translated as text. Now, once you have everything uh, in text that is supposed to be uh, localized, how to do this is in Unreal Engine 5, you go to Tools and you find a localization dashboard over here. If you are working in Unreal Engine 4, it will not be found under Tools, but instead under the Windows. This is the localization dashboard. It has a bunch of things in it. We won't be going through all of it. We will be going through the most um, core parts that is needed for this tutorial in this case. But we'll touch on some of them briefly. You have some localization service providers, some source control and some game targets. Game targets is a way to segment off um, different types of translations that you might have if you have for example, uh, expansions in your game. You can create a new target here that's supposed to be like DLC number one or something like that. And then you can have different, trans or different, you can have additional translations in that one. And then uh, these different targets that you have are then possible to uh, alter here how they're supposed to be loading with loading policies, depending on which uh, target you have selected. 
uh, it's it's a little bit advanced we'll possibly be getting to that in a later tutorial but for now let's go to the gather text part the gather text part is where we can say where we want to have the system scan for um, things that are to be localized so all our texts essentially so we can gather text files and packages and meta metadata here and under each of these you can see that we have uh, paths to include and exclude with wildcards and some other settings as well we will be keeping this fairly simple but that is how that is um, then you have what is probably the most important part when it comes to this tool for our case and that is this whole culture part down here now by default you can see that it has English here in this case we're going to be adding a new culture which essentially means a language in a certain region and in this case I'm going to be making Swedish because I am Swedish so if we type that in you can see that we get Swedish we can expand, the, expand that uh, compression there and we can choose a subsection if we wanted to so now I've added another uh, culture here essentially by default when you add the first one it gets set as the native so the the language that you're going to be translating from in this case I have done my translations or I've done my uh, text in English so I'll be changing this native to be English instead so that's what I'm translating from and this is what I'm going to be translating to Okay, so first of all, we can see we have a word count here. It says zero and 100%. This is because we have not currently registered any words in the project. So to actually gather our texts now from this project, we need to have our gather from packages marked, and then we need to put a directory where we want to search for it. Now we could in this case just have it uh, scan the entire content folder if we wanted to and have it go through everything or if we want to we can just go and tell it to look in specific folders like folder one and folder ui which i know we have this in uh, for simplicity's sake we'll just do content right now and then we'll click uh, gather text and then it will be starting to gathering that text and depending on your project and its size it might take longer or shorter but essentially now we, we can see what we actually have here now. So we have four words currently in our project available. And if we now want to start translating them, we click on this button over here, which is edit translations. So it will be translating from the native to the one that you're choosing, in this case, Swedish. So this is what it looks like. On the left, we have all of the sources that we can translate because we are under the untranslated tab now. We can go to needs review and complete it and search as well if you want to. So the left hand side here is the original language and on the right hand side you have the uh, correct or the, the current language you're trying to translate to. So for options here we could just type in uh, the Swedish words for this and and now as you see uh, every time I complete one of the words you can see that it's automatically updating and so, so everything is saved you don't need to save but if you want to you can of course do that uh, so, so every word that you change or update or, or modify will get immediately um, saved uh, however now we get to another part that's interesting here which is that we have two words that have the same word in it um, this is bad for a couple of reasons the reason why we have multiples is because i have an actor here where i deliberately have the type start in a text and I also have start in the menu over here so that is why it's appearing twice in this list now what you want to do in these cases is usually use a string table uh, the reason why this is bad is because if you have multiple lines saying the same thing uh, you can possibly make uh, different translations if they're not even supposed to have different translations uh, or you can make typos on one of them and not the other making it inconsistent and if you're having someone pay uh, paid for the localization they would also be translating this as two separate words instead of one meaning they would charge you for the extra word so what we want to do instead is we want to go to our project here and create under miscellaneous something called a string table we can call this st and then call it uh, localization that is not how we spell it but it's fine for, for this purpose 
Um, anyway, so how this works is here you can uh, assign a key which will uh, correspond to a sort of identifier for what the word is and then the source string will be the actual string itself so if we say ui start for example just so we can see that it's different and then we type in start here which is the string that we have an issue with currently we have now created a source string start for our string table now we need to go and change the sources where this is being used and say instead of being a text we need to point to the string table so in our example text here, which is one of the places where we have a start, we can click on the flag here and the flag represents essentially any place where you can see the flag is essentially where you can make use of localization. In this case here, you can see that it has a package and it has a key by default and it has the option of uh, adding a string table and you can also see that it is localized currently. So clicking here and choosing our localization table, we can then choose a row in that table in this case we only have one we have the ui start so we'll click the ui start and that's going to be uh, what this word now points to in our menu similarly we have the start we can go over here and make sure that it also points on the look the string table and the ui start now that these both have been pointed around we can go to our localization dashboard again and we can gather our texts anew. Can save selected. And we should be going from four words to hopefully ending up with three words. And we do. So if we go into the translation here again now for the Swedish one, we can see, actually we can't, let's update that properly like so. We can see that we only have one word appearing now. The reason for that is because we have two words we have already translated, so they appear as completed. And we have one that's untranslated, but we only have one start here now. So if we say start or begin or something like that, that is now handled uh, through the string table and this should now be done. So if we go and gather text again, it should be updating that our uh, Swedish has now been properly 100% translated as well. And it does. Now we have a translation or localization in place and we can already get to see what it looks like. So in your menu in this case, we have a button up here that says enables or disables localization and it has none here to begin with. If we click it open, we have nothing here available. The reason for this is that if we go back to our localization dashboard, these translations and even the native language here need to be compiled. So if we were to go to the button over here, compile translations for this culture, click on the Swedish one in this case, it will now be making sure that uh, whatever we have translated is now being applied. So when we go to our menu now, we can go and say we want to show it what it looks like in Swedish and nothing happens in this case and even if we click on the the globe nothing will happen because in this case we will be and this might be changed in the future uh, but currently we need to have a restart for this to work uh, at the start okay now that we have restarted we can click here again and we can choose swedish and we can see that it actually translates everything uh, the problem here now is that we can't go back to english or anything like that because we can only show swedish or none and the reason for that is what I mentioned earlier. We haven't actually compiled the English one either. So we need to compile the English one to make sure that it is available as well to preview in our editor. Now that English is compiled, we can go here and we can check English and it will translate properly to English again. There are times when you might not want to have something localized. Like for example, I've created a widget here called health and in it I have health as a text and I have another text which represents our health, which in this case is 100. Now you might want to have health localized to different languages, but the number might not be something that you want to localize. It will still appear in the list unless you go and check the flag and uncheck the localize for this text. This means it will not be picked up when you're trying to gather it. Now, uh, there are some cases, of course, where you might want to localize something, uh, specifically if you have it in a different font or something like that. So maybe um, Japanese characters or something like that, you may want to translate it. But in case you want to have something that you don't want to translate, make sure to uh, remove it from the localization. 
In this case, you can also see that it's no longer being localized because we don't have a flag here anymore. We have a, a warning triangle. And that's also a way that you can see that something is not being localized quickly without even uh, going into its settings. Now, you don't need to translate or compile the letters uh, or translate the localizations individually like we did here. If you want to, you can also just compile text up here, which will be doing all the translation of all the cultures that you currently have available set up here as well. So there are a few different ways you can go about doing this. Compiling all of them will, of course, take longer than just compiling an individual one. Uh, but depending on your needs, both of those are available. Now, if you want to test this out in your game, you can. Uh, I created just a small loading up the widget into your screen. And if we play, we can see that it gets uh, the default here. That is because I have it set to none. If I were to choose Swedish instead and play, it would get the Swedish one. So this is on a widget per widget basis in this case when it comes to the translation like so. Um, you can, however, change the settings in your editor. There is something in editor preferences, there is something called region and language. And here you can set up whatever language you want to have shown in your uh, editor. When it comes to a packaged game, it's going to be a little bit different. In a packaged game, uh, where, where you complete the game and want to ship it with different languages, you have to go into project settings. And there are some settings you need to change here. In this case, you need to go to packaging, you need to go to advanced, and you have internationalization support here. You need to make sure to have the languages that you want to have. So there are a few different settings here or all. You can also add localizations here to, to chunk if you want to. In addition to this, you also have uh, down here localizations to package. Here you have to include those that you want to have included in your project. Uh, it will be showing all, which means that you have a whole list of what Unreal Engine uh, can support, and you can click uh, localized to get just the ones that uh, are relevant for you. In this case, I had English and I had Swedish, so they are appearing in this list here. So you would check those that you want to have included. Um, when it come to, comes to the languages, uh, it will try to uh, it, it has a lot of different places where it checks where you are and what kind of language you want to run your game in. It, it, it's dependent on a few ini files for the project. Uh, we might go into this in a future episode. Uh, but essentially there, there are a bunch of different things that have a higher hierarchical uh, predominance. So some are more important than overrides others. Uh, and if you, for example, end up with being determined as having English in Europe and there is no translation for English in Europe, it will still find the one that is English, which is like the root for all the English, and then it will find that translation and make use of that. So it's fairly intelligent and this system is also being used in the Unreal Engine editor itself. So it's, it's a pretty robust system uh, overall. Anyway, that's all about the basics of translation and localization. Hopefully this was useful to you. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.